So when I was at university, I used to always um, hang around the local clubs or go to the local sort of restaurants and always ask whether they needed things like menus designed, flyers designed. And from that, doing that work, which was at the time actually free, um, I started to extend my portfolio. And with that, people started to see the work that I was doing and would ask me to, you know, come on and do flyers or posters for club nights that were happening around around the time. I wouldn't now ever recommend people doing any work for free. But if you're, you know, just straight out of university and you're thinking about trying to get some paid design work, I would suggest you just do some passion projects. So you design some posters or you kind of make up a, a fake brand, say, and do the design, the whole design system for that, and then put that on your portfolio. And I think that that enough will show your abilities and your creativity. And I don't think you have to do any work for free and then put that on your portfolio. And I think that that enough will show your abilities and your creativity. And I don't think you have to do any work for free. Yeah, this is an interesting one, one that I get asked all the time. Um, and I don't really know how helpful this answer is gonna be because, <laughs> I, but I, I basically, I, I tried not to think about it too much. I decided I just couldn't work in studios anymore. The design decisions that were being made, I just couldn't align with. I was always questioning like, why can we not push this further? Why can we not do something more experimental? So with that in mind, I set off and became freelance initially. So I was still going into studios on a day rate. I was still doing work in, in that sense, which allowed me to sort of have the stability in terms of finance. Um, I then began to take on the, the jobs I was getting through sites like Behance or Instagram in the evenings and at the weekends. So that time in my life was really busy. I hardly stopped working. Um, but it was super, it was super interesting, I think, because it allowed me to explore lots of different genres in terms of the work um, and also think about the different types of clients that I wanted to work with, which then allowed me to kind of construct more of a ethos or mission around Caterina Bianchini studio. Um, but it took a good few years, you know, it was um, a good few years of us being quite small, being a very small team running just with me and freelancers. Um, so what I would say is don't rush it, um, take some time and maybe kind of do it gradually in steps. Start off perhaps just going freelance, going into studios, then move that a little bit step further by doing say more of your own work that you're getting through your own channels and then when that work starts to take over and you have enough of it to employ other people or even just employ people on a on a day rate then then do that okay so we landed on not always right ideas right at the beginning as soon as we changed the name from Katrina Bianchini Studio that's what that acronym meant. And luckily it sounds quite good as a short name too. Not Always Right Ideas um, really links back to this essence of drawing away from textbook graphic design. And what we mean by that is having a more human approach to the work that we do. How we do that in practice is things like the bespoke logo types that we draw. Um, how we do that in terms of the way in which we work is through collaboration. We are super collaborative with our clients. We're really collaborative in the sense of the network of people that we might you know, work with or outreach to in certain for certain projects. Um, and I'd say just in terms of the way in which we conceptualize, we always try to bring it back to psychology. And what that does is it means that it always links back to sort of human and the human mind and stories and narrative, which psychologically allow people to actually understand things a lot more or connect with them on a higher level. So there, Nari was born. Creative direction, I would say, comes into lots of different things. So I would say I would start wide first rather than narrowing down so specifically right at the beginning. Um, I would say explore working on lots of different projects, whether they might be collaborative projects, say with other students or perhaps like somebody that you know family or friends wise who's starting a new company or has an opportunity for you to explore work and, and kind of explore creative direction. And I would also suggest perhaps going to 
talks or presentations where there's people that you admire or there's creative directors that you think are are really inspiring and listening to the way in which they got there, maybe the, the way in which they approach work. Um, I think that's probably where I would start. But I think the, the main essence is I wouldn't refine it down so quickly. I think when I went to university um, in Scotland, you have to do a foundation year. So you test everything. And I did a wee bit of fashion, uh, photography. I did design. I did still life drawing, which I was absolutely terrible at. But then in the second year, I was able to sort of really like refine that into graphic design. And I think creative direction is more of a title that you get just after a certain amount of time in a company or starting your own company and giving yourself that title. I think in terms of the inspiration in within design, say, um, I always think it's super interesting to see how people are, are doing things in terms of how they're creating art, if it's through AR, um, if it's like super analog, if it's developing new skills. Um, I always think that that's super interesting, just new ways of, of doing things and exploring design. In terms of outside of design, I'm very interested in how we're progressing as a as a society and I think that there's a lot of interesting discussions and topics and things about the metaverse um you know web3 um gen z just how people are kind of developing this new world that we're kind of embarking on I think it's super scary but I also think it's super interesting I also wonder you know just as a designer you have to be keeping on top of these things. You have to be you have to be learning about them because it might be one day that we have to make packaging for those things or we have to brand them. So I think almost just by reading about those things and understanding them, it's um, super interesting, but it's also almost super productive and informative for, for my practice as well. So I always look for somebody that is just having fun enjoying what they're doing lots of expressive bespoke typography and cool new ways of doing that is something else I always look for um I think a really strong conceptual mind as well um but with there being a sensibility to that and what I mean is that it's arty and it's fun but it still makes sense it has a sort of concept thread that runs through it that you can see that this thing can be easily applied to a design system etc because i think it's super easy to be conceptual and arty but actually in the in the sort of design studio scenario you would have to kind of really fight for those ideas or ensure that those ideas made a lot of sense for the client or the product um, in order to kind of push them through. So I think go wild with the ideas as long as you can you can sort of stabilise them and ground them in a sort of functionality and principle sense. I actually rarely look at where they've studied or what they've studied. For me, a lot of it is the work. It's just what it's showing, the creativity, the expression. You can always tell if somebody's having fun while they're doing something. I think it's very obvious in the the flow and the feeling of the work so I would say that's something that I would always look for in terms of um, what stands out in a portfolio.